Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we will talk about one autoimmune disease that is diabetes mellitus type 1. There is type 2 also that is not autoimmune disease, right? So it is an autoimmune disease where the beta cells, like in, a, in, in the that cells which are responsible for producing insulin, they are being damaged, right? So our body, they start detecting like they start uh, recognizing these uh, cells beta beta uh, what do you call beta cells as foreign and they will start attacking so what will happen their number will decrease and so there will be decrease in the insulin and it will lead to type 1 diabetes mellitus right okay so type 1 diabetes mellitus it is an autoimmune disease characterized by the destruction of insulin producing beta cells insulin producing beta cells in the pancreas right where in pancreas by the body's immune system which leads to a deficiency of in insulin a hormone which is required which is responsible for regulating blood sugar level right so it is a t cell disease right so t cell is involved over here where the t cells attack and destroys the pancreatic beta cells so t cells they start attacking this pancreatic beta cells right Mainly, it happens in children, adolescents, and young adults. Are, right? Type one diabetes mellitus patients are the they are thought to have an inherited. It is generally considered that it is hereditary. Right? It comes from the parents or genetic or due to the genetic factors. Right? Predisposition to the developing the disease. Like there is a term that is LADA latent autoimmune diabetes in adults. It, slowly right you will see how does it occurs generally this is these are the beta cells right there are different alpha beta and gamma so beta cells they are responsible for insulin right they have different role glucogen and somatostatin so what happens the isolates of Langerhans contain several types of cells right this alpha beta and gamma secreting distinct hormones alpha one is secreting glucogen insulin somatostatin each cell expresses different tissue specific proteins so what will happen it is a c type, uh, c type cell mediated disease so what happens they start recognizing this uh, attack this beta cell they they bind to the receptor and they will destroy them so what will happen destroy them so this once the cell is affected there will be no production of insulin right here beta cell damaged damage right so no insulin right no insulin is there so there will decrease in insulin right so concentration of glucose it will increase in the sugar and it will lead to type 1 diabetes mellitus this is a complex mechanism of how this disease is occurring right if you are interested you may go you may see which type of this molecules are involved over here right so what are the various symptoms in type, um, type 1 diabetes mellitus right there will be increased thirst which is known as polydipsia increased thirst there will be more like tendency to have more and more water right excessive thirst and frequent drinking of fluids that is one symptom frequent urination so if there will be more intake of water there will be more excretion of water also right that is frequent urination that is known as polyuria increased frequency and volume of urination extreme hunger that is polyphagia hunger right intense hunger and increased food intake and there is unintentional weight loss despite eating more individuals may lose weight rapidly due to the body breaking down muscle and fat for energy right this one <clears throat> all the fats they will the what do you call there will be leaning of muscles Symptoms, what are the symptoms? Fatigue, fatigue will be there. Persistent tightness and lack of energy, right? Blurred vision, high blood sugar level can cause the lens, lenses of the eye to swell, leading to blurred vision, right? Irritability or mood changes, sudden mood swings or irritability. Fruity swelling, breathe. There is sudden, okay, fruity swelling, in, in, why this is due to the production of ketones, a condition called ketoacidosis 
nausea and vomiting. There will be tendency of right vomiting or sometimes they may vomit. These symptoms can be the signs of diabetic ketoacidosis, a, a serious complication of diabetes, right? So these are the symptoms of type 1 diabetes mellitus. How it could be diagnosed? Di diagnosed by clinically, by like increased thirst was there, right? By less than polydipsia, polyuria, extreme hunger, unintentional weight loss, fatigue, blood vision. These could be diagnosed, right? So examined and can be concluded that patient is suffering from type 1 diabetes mellitus or yes by looking at the family history a detailed family history is taken at as there is a genetic predisposition to type 1 diabetes mellitus so there is a quick chances that it may come from the family so it could be also family history it could be also be studied diagnosis how it could be diagnosed further by performing blood test by fasting blood glucose test where what happens measures blood glucose level after an overnight fast so there in that case a level of 126 milligram per deciliter up to this much 7 millimole, millimole per liter right or higher on two separate tests indicates diabetes right random blood glucose test right a blood sample is taken at a random time a blood glucose level of 200 milligram per deciliter that is 11.1 millimolar per liter or higher along with symptoms of diabetes such as diabetes right or hemoglobin that is average one right this one indicates average hemoglobin test reflects the average blood glucose levels over the past two to three months and hba one c level of 6.5 or higher on two separate tests indicates diabetes so what is this one it is an average hemoglobin test. Hemoglobin A1C test is a blood test that measures average level of blood sugar glucose over the past two to three months. It is commonly used. It is commonly used to diagnose and monitor diabetes. Why? What? What is the purpose for the diagnosis? Helping diagnose pre-diabetes and diabetes. Monitoring used to monitor the effectiveness of diabetes treatment over time. How it works? Hemoglobin is a protein in RBCs that carries oxygen. Glucose in the blood attaches to these hemoglobin and forms gly gly glycated hemoglobin. This one in, in this test measures the percentage of hemoglobin that is glycated attached to the glucose. So, how it could be interpreted in normal one? What happens? Normal below, if it is below 5.7, it is normal. Pre diabetes, if the value for, is ranging from 5.7 to 6.4, then it is pre diabetes. Diabetes, if it is greater than, if it is 6.5 or higher than 6.5. Or the advantages, it reflects long term glucose levels, not just a single point, point in time. It can be done at any time day and does not require fasting. Limitations, conditions such as anemia or other hemoglobin, hemoglobinopathies can affect results, right? What we have seen earlier. It may not be as accurate in people with certain medical conditions, right? So if there is certain drug is being there, then or some other, other diseases are parallelly, is patient is affecting, in that case, it would be not that much effective. Diagnosis, how it could be diagnosed by performing autoantibody test, isolate cell, autoantibodies can be done. Test for autoantibodies against easily producing beta cells in the pancreas such as GAD65, IA2 and insulin autoantibodies, right. These are usually present in type 1, type 1 diabetes mellitus but not in type 2 diabetes mellitus, right. C-peptide test can be performed, C-peptide le level could be checked, right. Measures the amount of C-peptide, a byproduct of insulin production, right? Low level of C-peptide indicates low insulin production, which is characteristic of type 1 diabetes mellitus. So what are the various risk factors, right? Risk factors, genetic and family history can increase the risk and, and it often appears in childhood or adolescent, but cannot occur at an at a, but can occur at any age, but generally in childhood and adolescent, right? Complications without proper management, type 1 diabetes mellitus can lead to serious health issues like diabetes, ketoacidosis, kidney failure, heart disease, stroke and blindness. Treatment, what are the good treatment? 
Nutric Voice Lifelong Management with Insulin Therapy, Blood Sugar Monitoring and Lifestyle Adjustments to Prevent Complications. So this is what we have seen, type 1 diabetes mellitus which is an autoimmune disease. Right. Further in next class we will talk about other autoimmune disease. Thank you.